Hi, I'm Ashley from HomeLikeYouMeanIt.com. I'm a true color expert and decorator, and today I thought I would talk to you about green-gray paint colors. So these really pretty sagey green hues are super popular. They're super easy to work with, very versatile with a lot of decor. I did a blog post about um, my favorite green gray paint color several years ago and it's still one of my top blog posts. So today I thought it was time to do a video for a little side-by-side -side comparison of some of my favorite gray green hues. And then I hope you'll stick around till the end because I will give you my three no fail tips on how you can get the color right the first time without going to the paint store a million times, so stick around. Okay, so I'm just gonna kick things right off with one of the most quintessential sage green tones, and that is Benjamin Moore Saybrook Sage. If you love this color, I've actually done a full paint color review on this on my blog, and I'll link that below. But this is just, when you think of sage, this is just the, the best sage color, I think. One of the best sage colors on the market. Um, it's not too green, not too gray. That gray undertone really kind of works to soften it and kind of give it that silvery sage hue. So this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Benjamin Moore Spanish Olive. Huge departure from what I just showed you, but definitely still a green gray. Obviously it has way more gray than green, especially when compared to um, Saybrook Sage. And it's more of a medium depth paint color. So this is not a light color. Um, it's not a dark color either. It kind of sits right in the middle. Benjamin Moore Spring Thaw. So kind of a little bit in the same direction tone as Spanish Olive. Um, more gray for sure. There's also just a kind of like a hint of yellow. So um, this, this color might not be for everyone. It's definitely a lighter paint color. It's not um, one of the lightest on this list, but it is up there. So if you're looking for more of a lighter paint color with, with still some of those green, gray, olivey tones, this is definitely one to try out. Benjamin Moore Soft Fern. Not quite as light as Spring Thaw, but still pretty fairly light paint color. Um, definitely got more green in it than gray, but that gray does again work to give it that pretty sagey undertone. Um, has just a hint of yellow as well, so just something to be aware of. Sherwin-Williams Escape Gray. I love this paint color. I just did a full color review on this one as well, and I'll link that. But this is just, it's a for sure a dark paint color. I think it would look perfect on cabinetry or built-ins or in a powder room. Just a really pretty color. You don't hear a lot of people talk about this. I discovered it um, a little bit ago, but it's just, it's a gorgeous color. A good, good blend of green and gray. Neither one is too overpowering. Definitely one to try out if you're kind of in the market for a darker color. Sherwin-Williams Clary Sage. This is a really pretty paint color. It's definitely a darker color. Not quite as dark as Escape Gray, but still dark. It's got, um, as you can see, way more green than gray, and just that subtle gray undertone kind of works to soften up that color. Kind of gives me those farmhouse vibes a little bit, so if that's something you're after, definitely want to sample. Sherwin-Williams Evergreen Fog. This was a super popular paint color. I think it was 2021 when Sherwin-Williams named this the paint color of the year. It's definitely a darker paint color. Um, I don't know that I would use it in rooms with not a lot of natural light because it is gonna go substantially darker, so that's something to be aware of. Um, but this is a really pretty blend of green and gray. Um, probably more green than escape gray, but still really pretty blend. Okay, these last two paint colors that I'm gonna show you, I'm kind of um, mixing things up a little bit, but the first one is Sherwin-Williams Oyster Bay. So this has got that, that really pretty green gray, just like the rest of these, but then it has just a hint of a blue undertone, which I think just, it's so pretty, so versatile with decor, especially if you like to change up your decor a lot. Paint colors that have that blue, that green, gray, blue blend really kind of work with a lot of different decor styles, so this is definitely one to sample. And then we'll finish off with Sherwin-Williams Sea Salt. Everyone's favorite paint color, definitely a green gray, but also again with that blue undertone, which is pretty, pretty dominant, especially compared to Oyster Bay. 
but that green and gray kind of just works to soften this paint color and just makes it a really subtle, um, pretty backdrop for any, any room or any decor. Okay, so as promised, now I'm gonna give you some of my no-fail tips on how to choose your paint color the right way the first time without going to the paint store a billion times because I know that is everyone's least favorite chore. So here we go. So the first tip, and this is when you're working with saturated tones with neutral under with neutral paint colors, it's a whole different ball game. And if you're interested in that, I have um, tons of resources on my blog, which I'll link below. But with saturated tones, the way to get the paint color right is to ideally you want to choose your paint color last. And I know that is so different than how most people do it. I know most people, they paint their room first and then they go about trying to put furniture in. But honestly, the best way to go about choosing the right paint color is to fully decorate your room, get all your fabric samples in, get your pillows in, your rug, whatever, decorate your room and then choose your paint color. So that is the way that you can make sure that your paint color enhances your room and works with whatever decor that you've got. So just to give you an example, this room um, that I'm sitting in, this is our rec room and we are in the process of um, redecorating and redesigning. We just uh, put up the um, board and batten, which is why it looks so unfinished, but um, I wanted to go with kind of a a green, like a sagey green tone, like a lot of these colors, a blue, and then kind of like a sand color. So I got in a lot of different fabric samples because that's really, let me put up some of my boards first. That is really the only way to see what you're working with. I, I honestly, when I was ordering these, I thought all of these were sagey green tones, but you'll see in a second, they really run the gamut of greens. So, again, yes, I thought all of these were sage green tones. Turns out they are not. This is moss. This is more of a kind of a closer to a true green. This is sage for sure, and this is moss again. So I ended up going with this as my, as my green. Okay, and so... Um, as you can see, I mean, it'll, it will work with a lot of these tones, but there's really one on this list, I think I've already put it up there, that it really just looks like it's married to. And so that is this one right here. It's Clary Sage. Do you see how beautiful that is? It just is so, so pretty. So if I had gone ahead and painted my room maybe this color, it would still work. But I just, to me, the Clary Sage just cannot be beat with that paint, with uh, that fabric. So huge tip, decorate your room first. I know it's hard to hold off on paint because everybody is so excited about choosing the paint color first. Decorate your room first and then choose your paint color. Um, Additionally, you want to make sure that the paint color, the, the color you have on your walls isn't the only where, only place you see the color. So if I'm going to put this green on my wall, it doesn't need to be the only bit of green in the room. Ideally, you want to repeat that at least two other times in kind of various sizes to kind of give you that cohesive look. So the next tip I have for you, and this is a big tip because with the online photos of paint colors that are just they're everywhere. Um, people will look in magazines or they'll look on Pinterest or look on Instagram and they will find a photo and it will be just gorgeous and they'll love the paint color and they'll say, oh my gosh, what paint color did you use? And if you've ever followed interior designers, most of the time they will not respond and that is because there has been so much done in the post-processing with the editing and the color correcting that the paint color is really not gonna look the same as it does in that in that image and they don't want to mislead people. Um, and that is because not only the editing that I just talked about, but also the light in the room. So the light in the room that you see online, the inspiration photo or in your friend's house, that is gonna be different obviously than the light in your house. So you cannot take an online photo and say, that's the color for me, I don't even need to test it out, it's beautiful in that photo. You have to test it out because you have to see how it reacts in your room with your lighting. So for example, let's see. Oyster Bay, that's kind of a darker color, as is Evergreen Fog. So 
darker colors in rooms that are opposite the sun and maybe have one small window, really, they go substantially darker. And if that's the vibe you're looking for and that's what you want, that's great. But if you want these colors to kind of hold their own, they're really not going to work in a room that doesn't get a decent amount of light. Now, the same goes for these softer colors. If you have a room that just gets tons of natural light, faces the sun most of the day, these colors could get washed out. And you might be a little disappointed because they might not be quite as pigmented as you had imagined. So you might need to go just a shade or two darker. So that's why you want to test out your paint colors in your room, in your home, and see how they react in your light throughout the day. Okay, so the last tip I have for you, and this is a big one. Again, a lot of people do not do this. This is kind of a little, well, little known trade secret. You want to test out the paint colors on a pure white background. No more of this slapping up paint colors on your current wall color because that is going to negatively impact the color that you're looking at. So. Ideally, you want to get a poster board or you can just get computer paper and you can paint large samples. These are those peel and stick samples that I love from um, Samplies and you can just, I never take the backing off. I honestly just use painter's tape. You, you know, the border needs to be, you want that one inch white clean border around the entire paint color and then you want to put that up against the wall. So that is the best way to sample color. Don't ever, ever, ever put color right onto your current wall. It will just, it, it will be impossible to see what you're looking at. The next tip that I have for you, this is kind of a bonus tip. Just like we've done here, you always want to compare colors with other colors. Never, ever, ever choose your paint color in isolation. That is the biggest way to get in trouble. And don't just look at two colors. You really wanna look at you know, a handful of colors in the same color family and then you can get out of the color family a little bit like we have with this Oyster Bay that's got that, you know, the blue undertone. But you've got to look at colors together. Compare, compare, compare. That's what the way I was always taught. That is how you can truly see the undertones. In this case, you'll be able to quickly see which color has more green, which color has more gray, which color is darker, which color is lighter. Comparison is the absolute best way to see what you're working with. I hope you learned something today. I hope you like this. Um, if you do like paint color reviews, I plan to do a lot of these. So make sure you subscribe. And then I'll also put the link to my blog down below because I have over a hundred paint color reviews. So if you just love paint, just want to read about it all day, definitely check out our blog. Thanks so much.